Okay. May I apply the ice now? Yes. And I'm going to check your temperature. I'll be back and I'm going to bring the ice. Thank you. Welcome, welcome to winter. And uh, welcome, of course, uh, no matter what you believe, no matter what you do not believe, welcome no matter what you have done, and welcome no matter what you have left undone, welcome no matter who you are, and of course, welcome no matter who you love, because this isn't just our church, here at Trinity St. Paul's Center for Faith, Justice, and the Arts, and neither is it only the Church of the United Church of Canada. It is, in fact, Christ's Church, and in Christ's Church, everyone, everyone is welcome, especially you, beloved, both here and on Zoom. Kids, come on up. I've got a job for you. And I'm going to say this loudly in case she's within earshot here. Rose, can we all call Rose? Well, I'm so sorry, little Miss Rose, but it'll have to be next week for you. Who among you would like to be our candle lighter? You, oh my goodness, because a true, a true convert here at the candlelighting business. Okay, so hold on just a second. I have some words to say. 
Christ's light is in you and others. You show it to the world. You see it in all, making the radiance of Christ known in this world through word and action. We will be transformed. The light of Christ, the light of our world. Thanks be to God. Wonderful, thank you. And children, off to Children's Church, have fun. <laughs> Rose will be so disappointed, but she'll be back next week. So life and work of our congregation, there's a lot of it. So definitely by all means, check the backs of your bulletins in case I leave something out. But for starters, tomorrow morning at 1030 on Zoom is our Bible study and it's fun. You don't need to know anything about the Bible at all. The Zoom link is always online. So join us for that. Wednesday p.m. is our reflection and prayer series. That's at seven o'clock. And so again, um, really contemplative time to do meditation and prayer also on Zoom. So again, please join us for that. Today at five o'clock in our gym is the beginning of the vigil for the Global Day of Action. Uh, this is around the climate crisis and we will be praying with others around the world and we're gonna start it here at 5 p.m. So if you can, please make it out for this afternoon. Delving deeper next Sunday at 2 p.m. Uh, and it's Hendrika who's going to be leading that and it's about meeting spirit through prayer. That's on Zoom. Also next week, we have a guest preacher, a wonderful Anglican priest who is going to join us for the Trans Day of Remembrance, which is celebrated and mourned at the same time universally. Uh, and after our service, seniors and friends luncheon. That means all of you. So seniors and friends, if you're not a senior, you are a friend. If you're not a friend, you are a senior. No, you're your friend both. Anyway, it's a luncheon for everybody. And that is next week, right after the service. So Action Pack Church, your folks. And Jean is going to share. Actually, David, you wanted to introduce Jean, right? For our season of caring message today. Good morning. This is the fourth Sunday in the season of caring, and today our theme is caring inside and outside of our community. One of the ways that we are celebrating our caring inside of the community is through the community meals. And this is an opportunity for congregants, for people to come and make friends and renew friendships over a social uh, dinner or lunch. So how does this happen? Well, uh, there are people who have hosted uh, meals and there's a sign up sheet in the narthex right uh, uh, just uh, as you go out, please look at those and and you know sign up for a date that would be convenient to you. Don't worry about if you have any um, food uh, concerns you'll be able to communicate with your host about those and I'm sure um, that can be arranged, so I wanted to ask those hosts who are in the congregation now could you stand and just like acknowledge who you are there you are the hosts okay can we have a round of applause yeah fantastic so please take a look at the sign up sheet and if you are on zoom please uh, and are interested in joining one of these meals please put your name on uh, the chat in the chat and andrew if you could capture those names and uh, communicate them to sean or to myself 
and we'll, uh, we'll assign those names to a, to a meal. Um, I've asked Jean Moffat to come and speak on caring within and without. Jean. Good morning. 20 years ago next year, Bob and I joined Trinity St. Paul's. We joined mainly because although we lived in Toronto, our careers were taking us consistently outside of Toronto and outside of Canada. And as we had a number of conversations about what we hoped for ourselves in the future as we transitioned from full-time careers to part-time and then to volunteer work that meant a lot to us to do in community. So we realized that the key thing we were missing in our planning for the future was a community. We felt we needed to have that as our priority, to look for a community. And TSP has become that for us. The very first year we joined Trinity St. Paul's, we were invited to a meal in the home of one of the congregants here. And it was at this same time of year, at that time it was called the season of commitment. This year we're talking about this as the season of caring. In the years that followed, we continued being invited for a few years, but we also were placed in, in a home by our minister who was in charge of pastoral care at the time, who was making sure that we were mixed up to avoid the building of false fences that keep us apart from one another. And we began hosting meals on our own we learned and continued to learn that the key reason this faith community has been able to accomplish so many things inside and outside this church is because we have all not allowed the labels of young and old, new and old, LGBTQ2S+, and straight to be barriers to our getting to know one another. We are welcoming, affirming, and caring community. So we're not asking for you to go out there and look on the lists and find out where you see someone you know in order to say you'll have a meal at their house, nor are we asking you as people hosting them to just call on people you know to come to your home. What we're asking for is an exercise here in radical hospitality. We get together not because we know each other, but because we don't really know each other well enough, and we want to know each other. It's exciting and essential particularly coming out of two and a half years of not being able to be together very often, to break bread with each other as an exercise in building and maintaining a vibrant community of love. So sign up today. A lot of these meals are happening already this week. They will happen throughout the rest of this month. And I hear some people saying they may even offer meals in December, David. So in terms of caring outside our community, Sherry has already referred to the vigil tonight to express our concern about the climate emergency. We have a very dedicated climate justice list of people here who have done amazing work over the last 12 years in um, setting the stage for both our community and the National United Church to divest our funds from fossil fuels. Now we want to join with 
lots of other people as we have done in the past for these vigils that take place at the time of the COP meetings that are the, the climate meetings at the UN that are known as COP27 this year because it's the 27th such conference. It's the conference of the parties who have signed onto the UN framework on climate change. So we're gathering here first, we're hosting as a Trinity St. Paul's Climate Justice Group, we're hosting a broader vigil tonight, but we're starting here at our church at five o'clock in the studio, just back there. Then at 5.30, we will all be marching over together with candles to the corner of Spadina and Bloor, where we will be led by our friends from Kairos, which is our interchurch social justice coalition, by our friends from For the Love of Creation, which is our national interfaith coalition, and by Climate Fast, which is one of the key uh, climate justice coalitions in this city located in this neighborhood as well. So come at five o'clock, well-dressed. We're gonna spend a half an hour together signing some letters to our prime minister and other political leaders about the urgency we feel on this matter. Then we're walking together by at 5.30 to that park. The uh, vigil will last no longer than an hour, but we really welcome you to come because it's the way this community has for many years cared about deeply about this issue. Thank you. So, beloved, let us worship together. Creator God, you gather together and make all things new. Renew our hearts and minds as they move toward you in this hour. Living Christ, heart of God, you set the example, you show us the way. As you lived and loved, may we live and love. Spirit, breath of the divine, you surround us and penetrate every part of our being. May your rising tide of compassionate love lift all of us here to know you fully in the mystery and reality of God and neighbor. Amen. We at, Trin uh, we at Trinity St. Paul's always acknowledge that we are on traditional territory here and that spiritualities of our indigenous uh, brothers, sisters, and others have always been a part of the makeup of this land. Today, uh, certainly in my prayers, I'm thinking of missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. I'm thinking of how little has been done, sadly, by our governments on that file. And so I ask you to hold uh, the families who have lost someone in prayer. As we assemble in this holy place, we recognize that for thousands of years, 
this territory has been a sacred gathering place for many peoples of Turtle Island. We respectfully acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of several Indigenous nations and wish to pay special recognition to the Mississaugas of the credit. The original nations continue to cry out for justice. As treaty people, we commit to listen, learn, and work to right the wrongs of the past and present. Good morning. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 to 25. God is speaking to Isaiah about making a new heaven and a new earth, and about what that future creation will be like. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth the former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them, or plant and others eat. 
For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Our second reading is Psalm 98. It's in Voices United on page 818. And we will begin with singing the first refrain. Sing to God a new song, for God has done marvelous things. Your right hand and your holy arm have brought victory. You have made known your salvation and revealed before the nations your saving power. You have remembered your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Break into joyous praise. Sing psalms. Sing psalms to God with the harp, with the harp and melodious voice, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before our sovereign God. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and its inhabitants. Let the rivers clap their hands, the hills sing together for joy before God. You come to judge the earth, O God, to judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. And our third reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, 21, verses 5 to 19. Jesus is talking with his disciples about the destruction of the temple and about the signs that indicate the end times. Some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, nation will rise against a nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilences in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison, 
and you will be brought before kings and governors and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. Herein is wisdom. Thanks be to God. Before we pray together, um, just a read of the crowd. Who here needs some good news? Anybody? Oh, come on. Yeah, everybody. Because like with the midterms hanging in the balance to the south and with everything happening here and with the climate catastrophe on the horizon, we need good news. Uh, so let's pray. Dearest God, source of all love, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. So, did we actually hear what Jesus just said? Basically, this is, this is Jesus' pitch to, to the disciples and to us. Okay, so there's gonna be world wars, there's going to be earthquakes, pandemics, disease, natural catastrophes. Uh, then you are probably going to be arrested and your parents are going to sell you out. And everybody else, all your friends you thought were your friends, they're going to betray you. And then you're going to find yourself, some of you tortured, some of you tortured and many of you dead. But don't worry. That's what he's saying. But don't worry, what? And he was being optimistic, think about it, because actually all of them died, didn't they? They all died and so will we. Not a good start for good news, right? But here's the thing, Jesus was right. He was right in the predictions about everything that happened and everything that happens. And Jesus was also right about paradise. And it's paradise I wanna talk about because that's where the good news is, paradise. And I'm not talking about after we die. I'm not talking about that because I don't know about that. In our creed, it says God will be with us this life and beyond this life. I'm good with that. I don't think any of us really know answers to that. I wanna talk about paradise as it's discussed in the Bible, as Jesus talks about it, and as we know it, because we all know it, don't we? We all know what paradise will look like, this beautiful description in Isaiah, but we know in our own words, in this year, 2022, what paradise will look like, don't we? We know this, we know that paradise will mean that every child has enough to eat, that every child around the world will have a roof over their head. We know that every child, no matter what race they're born into, no matter what country they're born into, no matter what faith they're born into, will have what they need to succeed. We know what paradise looks like, we know it means radical hospitality and radical equality of everyone. We know this, don't we? We know it so well and we see it so well if we just take a second to think about it and to pray about it, that it's like just a grasp away. We know it and we have always known it, always. There was a saying in political life when I was there that the perfect is the enemy of the good. And if there's one thing you take away from this morning, 
It's that that is a wrong, okay? It is an excuse for no political backbone. It's an excuse for not aiming for what I've just described. No, perfection is the incentive for the good. So that idea of paradise, that paradise that we all know, that paradise, that's the incentive for all of the good that we do. There was an old um, joke about the NDP when I was asked to run for the party, and, uh, and it went like this. I mean, we've all, we've all heard the slogans and demonstrations, what do we want, peace, when do we want it, now. Well, the joke goes like this. What does the NDP want? Modest reforms. When do they want them? As soon as strategically realistic. So whatever party you affiliate with, whatever you think politically, as elections are happening south of the border, and of course, we have our own issues here, um, know that paradise should be and always should be our aim, nothing less. And that the good we do, the reforms we achieve are just a step towards that. That's where we need to go. It's always been with us, not just in Christianity. Uh, the Greeks had Elysian fields. Buddhists have Nirvana. The Celts, the fortunate Isle of Magmel. Who knew? And then there's the arts, right? There's Milton, Paradise Lost. There's Handel's Messiah, which will be coming into our lives soon with Advent and Christmas. There's Tupac's Heaven Ain't Hard to Find. There is art from Hieronymus Bosch right through to Mark Rothko, images of the divine, images of paradise. Art is filled with images of paradise. And art's point is that paradise. When, um, when I think of these words from Luke, two things come to mind. That something is greater and more lasting than this life. And that these words are true. And that not a hair of our heads will be touched. In reality, that we will see paradise one day. And why do we say that? because we already know it, and because we get glimpses of it right here and right now, like right here and right now. Because what is the point of this place? What is the point of faith? What, what are we doing here if we're not keeping paradise ahead of us in all of its glory? and contrasting it with what we walk out into the world with and stepping towards it and moving towards it, calling to it, praying to it, embodying it, trying to live it and noticing it when we see it right here and right now. Um, there was another person in my political days who used to walk into Queen's Park and say, another day in paradise. He was being facetious, but he shouldn't have been, because it was, and it is. When I was a little kid coming home from school, and many who've had even dysfunctional families, some happiness in their childhoods will ring with this, I thought paradise would look just like Toronto. Imagine, I thought parrot, I couldn't imagine anything more beautiful than this city, and anything safer, more secure and loving then walking into my home. That was paradise. And if I thought about anything post-death, I thought about that. How heaven would be just like, you know, the theater at Young and Bloor, you know? I mean, think about it right now, right now. Paradise um, comes from an Iranian word 
meaning uh, per Persian word actually, um, enclosed park or enclosed garden. That's where the word comes from. And it's so beautiful to think of Iran right now because what keeping paradise in front of us ev invokes and evokes from us is courage. Because if we are so sure that that is where we're headed, we can be so brave. And so thinking of Masa Amini, that incredible woman who was killed in Iran and about the revolution that she set in motion. And who are the revolutionaries in that revolution? They are women, but not just women, they're children. They are school children who are standing up against armies, against certain, some of them death and imprisonment. What are we afraid of? What could possibly match that? And why do they do it? Because it's so clear to them where they're headed and what they need and what, let's just say it, the divine wills, what God wills for them. They are so sure and certain of that, that they are willing to risk their lives. What are we willing to risk our lives for? Or just even Sunday morning, or just even some action or some thought or some petition or some, what are we willing to do if paradise is assured? What are we willing to do? Um, after a couple of years of, of political life, I really needed a bit of paradise when I was elected. And so this is about 10, 12 years ago now, but I thought, I want to go somewhere, some jurisdiction in this planet where things are better, much better than here. So I and a government group went to Sweden. And here's what we found. And things haven't changed that much, a little bit less heavenly, but not much. What we found was a community, it's now about 10 million people. It was then about 9 million, so smaller country smaller than Ontario, that built 100,000 new units of affordable housing a year. So there was no homelessness, virtually, where 85% of the population were unionized, including McDonald's employees. At the time, we were fighting for a $10 minimum wage in Ontario, and they were already making 20-something because they were all unionized almost, right? And where childcare was free, even now, it's only about 200 bucks a month max, where dental care and pharma care were free and where tuition was free. In fact, when we were there, the students were on strike because they weren't being paid enough to go to university because they told us that it's not just the tuition, it's also housing and books, you have to live. This is just another country, and quite frankly, a successful capitalist one. I mean, for a community of 10 million, Ikea, Sony Ericsson, Volvo, we could go on and on with Swedish companies that we all know that are all successful. It was remarkable to just fly across the ocean and see that, and then come back. It's not heaven, it's not paradise, but sure, better than what we came back to. Possible, it's possible. It's possible to do things so much better. So, was Jesus right? Absolutely. All those terrible things did come to pass. Was Jesus right? Yes so much better. I don't know about you, but if you've lost someone you've loved ever in your life, and you can imagine them coming back into your life, and what you would do if they just manifested all of a sudden. And when I think about that, I think about the silliest things. Like, I want to show them the internet, like how to Google, you know? <laughs> or I want to take them to a restaurant that wasn't around when they were here. I mean, or I want them to see the 
you know, the kids that have grown up since they weren't here anymore. These small, subtle human things that we, the living, get to experience every hour of every day. So maybe as a kid I was right. Maybe paradise is Toronto. Maybe it is. Certainly we have these glimpses. We cannot think of something. We cannot envision something that does not have a basis in our reality. Even unicorns are just horses with an extra appendage. Think about it. We know paradise and paradise is our promise. It's our promise. So what about the disciples? They all died. They were all, as Jesus said, arrested, many tortured. Um, their fate wasn't pretty. But they were an incredibly optimistic bunch after Pentecost. They had no problem, like those children in Iran, of standing up against armies, of facing down an entire oppressive empire called Rome. They did all that in the sure and certain knowledge that there is more to life than this physical life. They knew that this physical life plays into this story, this beautiful human story of paradise, that we are part of that incredible progressive movement forward to this beautiful, beautiful promised land. They knew it. They knew it so, so deeply, like those kids in Iran, that they were willing to give their lives for that. Were they wrong? Absolutely not. Did you know, I'm not inventing this. I had to look it up twice because I didn't believe it. There are 45,000 Christian denominations in this world. Yeah, not 45 or 4,500, 45,000. There are hundreds of thousands of churches. Many of those hundreds of thousands of churches have the names of those disciples on them, as does ours. Trinity St. Paul's. Those disciples didn't die. They're more alive than you and I. Jesus certainly didn't die. Because look what we're talking about. And this community, this paradise now, all these churches, these buildings in and of themselves, are the work of artists and architects trying to capture paradise in a building. And then the people who walk into the building, you know, gather together to learn how to be paradise with each other. Whatever they believe, whatever they don't believe, whatever they've done or whatever they've left undone, whoever they are, they learn, we learn, to be paradise with each other, to build a community of love, a sanctuary where everyone can come for safety and security, just like the little kid running home from school, for safety and security and support and love right now. So we had a taste of what it just might look like. There's, um, it was so beautiful at the anthem today is the words are by Sylvia Dunstan. Sylvia Dunstan, by the way, is a, a saint in the United Church, as far as I'm concerned. She, um, she used to show up occasionally at seminary when I was at Emmanuel. Um, this big woman, strong woman, you know, this total, you know, what we would say, bull dyke of a woman, wearing a collar, all of the gear. Um, I often think of her for wearing this collar. And she was a prison chaplain. That was her job, of women whose lives were anything but glorious. And that's what Sylvia did. Every day she went to a prison. And then she would sit down and write these songs, these lyrics. You know, rest in me, O weary traveler, rest in me, my heart is gentle. Rest and cast away your care. Sylvia has been, as one of the Christian denominations say, promoted to glory. She's no longer with us physically, but we just sang her song. How beautiful is that? 
there's a great, um, a great quote, and I don't know who said it, but it goes like this, try, fail, try again, fail better. <laughs> I love that because that's the process to get to paradise. So my friends, the perfect is not the opposite or the enemy of the good. The perfect is the incentive of the good. Keep those images of paradise alive with you. With that in your mind and your heart and your soul, you will face anything. We have a couple of thousand years of biblical history to prove that. And Jesus was right. So rest easy. You don't have to carry it alone. You are carried on the wings of angels. You are carried by our elders for thousands of years who have painted for us a picture of beauty, of justice, that we know is true. We know it. Let's make it so. Amen. And now we're going to have a little experiment in that. We are going to pass the peace, which is a way of saying you and I, we all, our priesthood of all believers, we all of us are saints, we all of us are called, and we all of us are created in the image of the divine. We are beautiful, we are loved, beloved, and we are essential. And I started all off, and by the way, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. At home, you can hug and dance and sing, whatever. Uh, and here, just make sure you get consent if you're going to get physical, just say it. And I'm gonna start it all off by saying, the peace of Christ be with you.
We're not passing a plate around today for a variety of reasons, but that doesn't stop you from being generous. So there's a QR code in your bulletin. You can just place the camera of your phone over that and give that way. You can later go online and donate both through Canda Helps and just donate here and follow along. There are many, many ways you can be generous and please be generous. It is so important to have sanctuaries like this one. This holy church and sacred space stand firm in a world where many desperately seek acceptance, community, Christ. Trinity St. Paul's has gifted us with a home and sanctuary where we thrive and flourish. Let us take this moment to reflect on how we can give back. Let's take a moment of quiet reflection. Holy God, we offer prayers of gratitude and gifts of resources, confident that your love working in this world can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. In prayer, we offer our thanks and share our hopes and concerns with God. We begin by singing the prayer response found at More Voices 146.
Creator God, ever-changing yet ever the same. You give us a foundation in the midst of chaos, and you call us to reach out from that safe holy ground to respond with faithfulness to a world of change and challenge. You give us opportunities in a universe of persons, persons of different cultures, different beliefs, different traditions. You call us to respect and value all persons for who they are and what they bring. You give us resources of the earth, materials, plants and animals. You give us resources of reason, knowledge and imagination. And you invite us to work with you to use all our resources to bring order and justice and health to the whole of creation. You call us to live in community with others of different experiences and different beliefs and together make, a re make real and concrete the kingdom you desire for all your creation. And so, gracious God, speak to us now in the silence of our hearts. Loving God, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift you give us, individually and in community, for the challenges and the opportunities to grow, for the chance to do our part in the building of a world where all are valued and cared for. Companion God, you do not ask us to accept passively all that we are told, nor blindly obey the rules we are given. You call us to make decisions for ourselves and with others, to choose the actions that are good and life-giving, actions that resonate with your intention in creation. And so we seek guidance and help. We look to the teaching and example of Jesus, to the prophets with whose writings he engaged in a search for truth, and to all of every faith who seek to live in your way. We look for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit to be our mentor. Mentoring God, in your presence we reflect on the choices we have made or will soon make, small choices, to give to a beggar or to pass by, to challenge an unkind or bigoted remark or let it go, to suggest some action or leave the initiative to others, or bigger choices about home or job or relationships. And so, holy God, speak to us now in the silence of our hearts. Loving God, hear our prayer and in your love answer.
God, we reflect on the choices made on our behalf in our city or nation or the world. Choices about the provision of health care, of education, housing, transport. Choices about international trade and industry. Choices about intervention in the affairs of other nations. God of all wisdom, guide the discernment of all leaders in the human community. Give them honesty to recognize their own bias and limitations. Give them a listening spirit to hear more fully what others are saying and give them the humility that takes it into account, the needs and the wisdom of others as they make their decisions. Above all, give them an understanding and compassionate heart to love their neighbors in all the world as they love themselves. Creator God, you care deeply for each one of us. So hear us now as we pray for particular persons. The Reverend Michael Cottrell. Rodolfo Estrada Alcorta. I am Asma. Clark brother of Mac Miller. Crow Zand. Iris Horowitz. Maya Tarud. Karen Hilfman Milson. Tony Wise. Jackie McKinley. Dan Beckett, Ja M. Said, Jim Lewis and family, Mary Marshall. Loving God, hear our prayers and in your love answer. Creator God, as we reflect on our call to be the church in the world, we pray with the Shining Waters region of the United Church of Canada, of which we are a part, and in particular with the congregations of Forest Home United Church, Aurelia, Christian Island United Church, and Kingsway Lambton United Church in Toronto. May your Holy Spirit be with these and all communities of faith throughout the world. God of all faithful people, hear us as we join in our ecumenical prayer with the church in Aotearoa, New Zealand and Australia, and from last week, the countries of Oceania, namely American Samoa, Cook Islands, Fiji, French Polynesia, which includes Mahoe, Nui, Kanaki, Kiribati, Marshall Islands, Micronesia, Nauru, Niu, Palo, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu. Blessed are you, God of the universe. You have created us and given us life. Blessed are you, God of the planet Earth. You have set our world like a radiant jewel in the heavens, and you have filled it with action 
beauty, suffering, struggle, and hope. Blessed are you, God of Aerotea, New Zealand, Australia, and Oceania, in all the peoples who live there, in all the lessons they have learned, and all that remains for them to do. Blessed are you because you need us, because you make us worthwhile, because you give us people to love and work to do for your universe, for your world, and for ourselves. God, your universe presents us with many choices in a challenging world. Grant us the courage to change what needs to be changed, the grace to accept what cannot be changed, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen.
There are more things in heaven and earth that are dreamt of in our philosophies. Uh, and I think of John Keats now, this 20-something romantic poet who said, truth is beauty and beauty truth, and that is all you need to know. So know that and know this, that paradise is just way too beautiful not to be true. So go forth into this world carrying with you paradise. Carry it with you wherever you go. It will give you strength beyond your wildest dreams because it defies death. It defies hatred. It defies every negative. It walks with you just as God does. God, the source of all love, Jesus Christ, who is love incarnate, and the Holy Spirit loves power. Amen.